Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which is another in a series of videos looking at the cameras used by the Grenztruppen, the border guards of East Germany, obviously responsible for patrolling the eastern side of the inner German border, obviously the Berlin Wall as well. Cameras formed an important part of their equipment, not only for border, border reconnaissance officers who were recording what was going on in the west, but also for recording uh, escape attempts and keeping a record of exactly how an escape had been attempted. So essentially crime scene photography, that style of photography anyway, uh, providing a photographic record of those events. So quite a, a key piece of equipment for the Grenz Troop and along with their, their military equipment. And what we're looking at here is an example of a slightly earlier camera than the one we looked at previously. In the previous video in the series, we looked at the Practica MTL-3, which was used through the late 1970s and well into the 1980s. The camera we're looking at here is a somewhat simpler camera. It is again an SLR, but it's the exa one a And these show up in photographs. I've certainly seen at least one photograph of these in use in the 1970s, the early to mid 1970s. I believe they may have been in use from the 1960s as well. The camera itself was in production from 1964 to 1977, which it gives you some idea of when these would have been in use. So we're going to have a look at this in some detail now, along with the case and little booklet that came with it. So without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at the camera in some detail. So here we have it, the Exa 1A. We have a little pamphlet that came with it as well here. We'll have a quick look at this first because it gives some further details. It is in German, of course, but it does give some further details of this camera. One detail I want to talk about, if I can open this up. The camera we're looking at here has the viewfinder set up so you look down on top of the camera to basically have a look at what you're taking a photograph of and it's reversed. You have a mirror image in the viewfinder. The camera does allow for this to be removed and replaced with a well, typical viewfinder obviously looking from the rear of the camera. So you can basically have this set up to shoot from waist level or bring it up to the eye, more standard manner. Well, certainly for, for this period of SLR, the more standard manner of doing things. And you can see the variations here with the different viewfinders and obviously a different lens fitted there as well. And I will just pause on these pages for anyone who does speak German and is able to read German rather. You can have a look through these. I read enough German to yeah, get a little bit of what's being uh, said in these pages, what's being uh, information that's being presented. Basically an instruction manual and further information. There's some information on the back of this about lenses, the different lenses that could be used with the camera and you have the exacta brand mark down there in the corner. Obviously these were not only used, they are a commercial camera, they were not only used by the Grand Strip and they were widely available on, on the market. They were sold in the West. They were a, a, uh, an important export product from East Germany. And as a result of that, as we'll see in a minute, it does have made in GDR on the back. But we actually have uh, the case for this here, first of all, and you have a, a leather strap, as you can see there. And then the case is made of a combination of, I think, real leather and then this hard plastic shell on the front to protect the lens. It closes at the rear with these chromed press studs. Open up there, or snaps, to use American terminology. And if we open this up carefully, you can see the camera here. Now, you can use this in the case. The bottom just, well, the top rather, just hangs down at the bottom here. And uh, you can access all the controls you need to take photographs with the camera like this. You can see it's lined in this red felt. You can see some details of the construction there, the chrome edging, obviously construction ins inside there, the way it's riveted together. You can unclip this, this section to just have the upper part, the lower part, excuse me, of the case. You can uh, rotate this round and unhook it, but I'm not gonna do that right now. It's quite a nice case and it's very effective. It's a very nice example of the case and camera. I'm very happy to have these in the collection. Uh, they came from Germany, so thank you to uh, Tommy Richter who helped to uh, get these bits and pieces together and send them over to me. The way this attached into the case is using a screw, which is also it screws into the fitting for the tripod on the bottom here. If you unscrew this, we'll be able to remove the camera from the case and have a look at it in more detail. That just slides out of there, and I'll put the case and the booklet to one side while we have a look at the camera in a little bit more detail itself. So. You can see the details here. We have uh, the, the camera body itself fitted with a Maya optic lens there. You can see this is a, a 2.8 uh, by 50, a fairly typical uh, lens there. 
this is quite interesting in that it has this lever over the, the shutter release on the camera. When you press that down gently uh, up to that point, you get a uh, indication of the lighting of the photograph and then you pull it all the way, you take a photograph. So you, you have that interesting feature here with the lenses designed for this camera or the lenses used with this camera. That's a feature of the design there. You have two little lugs here to which you could mount split rings to fit a shoulder strap directly to the camera rather than using the case. Obviously you have the, the various details on the lens there and the controls there for the lens itself. On this side here you have the control for the exposure. You can see that there. And the rewind. So you have this little knob here allows you to rewind. You have to press this button in here and then you can rewind the film using this knob here. At the back here you actually have a little indicator here which allows you to prevent the camera, prevent the shutter from being depressed accidentally, which is quite an interesting feature. So if I wind on and have this set up, I think at the moment with the red dot, you can see I'm pressing down on the shutter button there, but there's, there's nothing happening. If I flick that off, there we go. We've taken a picture if we had film in the camera. So that's an interesting, almost a safety catch, I guess you could say there, uh, which is an interesting feature of the design. As you can see, we have the the count here for the photographs on left on the film and the manual uh, lever there to wind on the film. Obviously this is manually reset each time you load in a new film. We pop this, oh, I'll pop this open here. So first of all, so you can see uh, there's a little button up here, which we may be able to, that's our, the fire guard from the fire. You can just see through the viewfinder there. Let's see if I put my hand in front of here, you can see the view we get down through the viewfinder there. So this can be held sort of just just sort of at low chest, lower chest or waist level and you can use this viewfinder. This, however, can be very easily removed and replaced. It literally just pops out and you could put in a viewfinder obviously with the, the, uh, the viewfinder at the rear if you wanted to. They're very, very easy to change. So quite a neat, neat little unit there, as you can see. Quite nicely made. I have to say the quality of this is, is quite impressive really. The EXA range from Exacta was designed to be a cheaper SLR for amateur photographers. Very simple design, but they are very nicely made, it has to be said. You can see here the marking I mentioned before, made in GDR on the back there, obviously made in German Democratic Republic, so in English for the export market. And then the way you get into this to change the film is quite uh, simple. Obviously the centre uh, hole here is the, the threaded hole for the tripod and also to attach this into the case and the, the outer ring unlocks the base and back of the camera which just slides off like that. You can see how that locks in underneath and this of course allows you to fit your film in to the back here. If I wind this on again, I think I've already wound it on. If I release the safety, press the shutter, you'll be able to see the action inside the camera. There we go. So really quite a nice thing. Uh, quite, I like the design of this. I like the look of the camera. Uh, it's, I say I've not used it as yet. I may well use it at some point. A little tricky doing this, looking through the camera. Come on, line up. Dear, oh dear. I'm going to admit defeat. Did this just before, no problem. What am I getting wrong? Are we in? There we go. That is not normally that tricky to do. It was just me trying to do it looking through the camera uh, that caused the problem there. But that is the exa one a As I say, at some point I would like to put some film in this and have a go take some photographs with it. It's quite small compared to other SLRs of the time. I guess you could say it, it's still quite chunky, but it's not a huge camera by any means. And as I say, these were clearly used by the Grange Troop in some degree. There are photographs of them in use. As I say, it's a simple SLR camera, it put one of the cheaper range of cameras from Exacta. And there were various versions of the EXA uh, camera, this being the 1A. There were various other versions of this out there. As I say, I'm not a camera um, aficionado by any means. This, uh, the reason I have this in my collection is because of the military collection with the Grenz Troop. And there are other videos on YouTube talking about these in a bit more detail and showing photographs taken with them. And that might be of interest as well. But that's a brief run over the EXA 1A and some of the accessories there, the case and the instruction booklet that came with it as well. 
So I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. There will be more parts to this series uploaded going forward, looking at further cameras used by the Grenz Troop in both still and motion picture cameras. If you'd like to see those videos, or indeed if you'd like to see the other content I upload on the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.